Welcome back, Pokemon trainers, to our second semi-final of the Utrecht Special Event 2023. We've just seen Aurelian Sula confirm their place in the final. And next up, we have Eric Rios against Marco Silva for that second place. Yeah, fantastic showing from Aurelian in that last round. And going to have to contend with an international champion as the other finalist. We've got Marco Silva, who was able to win the Oceania International Championships. We've got Eric Rios, who was able to win the European International Championships. One of them will be joining, uh, joining Aurelian in that final. Yes, absolutely. I'm uh, Charlie Merriman. I'm again, uh, once again, joined by Jamie Boyd to cast this second semi-final match. And we just had the Battle of the Dragonites in our previous game. And uh, this time we have a battle of two different dragon types, the Roaring Moons. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like both of them are going to be going for that Flying Terror, the most consistent option we've seen across uh, the formats so far. We've had some very cool techs on the Roaring Moon. We've had some Terra Poison uh, Breaking Sight ones. We've had some Terra Ground Stomping Tantrum ones. But it seems like the Terra Flying is the way to go for both of these trainers. We've got Marco there on the left and we've got Eric on the right for you. Uh, so t these are the other two semi-finalists. One of them will be joining Aurelian in the final. The question is, will it be another three game match that Eric had against Oliver Esglin repeated here? Um, from what I'm aware of, Marco likes to go for hyper offense, faster plays, but looking at his team, Pokemon like Garganackle and Moongus, perhaps he's taking this one at a slower pace. Yeah, p quite possibly. You can see there, uh, they're both an international champion and a regional champion to boot as well. The Pink for Marco, Liverpool for Eric, and like previously mentioned, Oceania for Marco for the international and Europe for the international for Eric. Eric is, of course, a player who in the last uh, season in Generation 8 was able to accumulate a huge amount of uh, championship points. And uh, he's on course to accumulate a huge number again this season. Such a consistent player. And, uh, you know, he tends to choose teams that uh, are comfort picks for him. Teams that uh, are on as um, <coughs> standard course of events do quite well into the meta. And uh, we'll have to see if it pays dividends again for him here. Yeah, it seems like he's got some very consistent picks. Uh, it does tend to be his play style there uh, to go with what is going to be working in the meta. A very, very solid team for sure. We can have a quick look at the teams for both of these players. Uh, Marco has a little bit of a twist on uh, what you consider the Pokemon in the meta. Garganackle is a very strong Pokemon. It's proven that. It's won a regional championships. But it did fall off a little bit. It seems to be making somewhat of a resurgence as well. Also, Fluttermane is the go-to in the Ghost and the Fairy, given the fact that it's the most common Pokemon we have at the moment for trainers to use. But Mimikyu is the Ghost Fairy of choice coming out for Marco. Still going to be very, very strong here. Going to be rocking that Life Orb so it can still do the massive damage. But the key thing about Mimikyu, it gets Disguise. So even though Fluttermane wouldn't be able to survive many attacks because of its, its low bulk on the physical side, Mimikyu can survive whatever so long as it is the first one because of that Disguise. Also, it has access to priority in the Shadow Snake. That means that your Mimikyu should theoretically beat opposing Fluttermanes because you'll be able to out-prioritize them. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it's a really strong move against the Fluttermane, which again, as you mentioned, uh, has a low physical defense. And there we go, we can see that Mimikyu there. Um, a curse as well, really interesting move to see how that plays out. We'd love to see this coming out, as well as the Garganackle, a Pokemon we haven't seen too much so far this tournament, with Salt Cure, Recover, Wide Guard, and Protect. And uh, looking across to the other side of the screen, there is Marco's Roaring Moon. It's a Booster Energy, Acrobatics, Protect, Dragon Dance, Throat Chop set. Yeah, absolutely. Going for the Dragon Dance here, in instead of the Tailwind. A Dragon Dance can be able to benefit the Roaring Moon better. Tailwind helps the whole team, but you're still going to get the speed boost, the Dragon Dance, but you increase your offensive prowess a lot with even just one Dragon Dance, especially with the fact that it's going to be the attack boosting booster energy on the uh, Roaring Moon as well. Even just a plus one with the Dragon Dance does some serious damage. Yeah, absolutely massive. And uh, with a uh, Flying Terror type Acrobatics with that booster energy used up, could be uh, absolute devastating damage as we get into Eric Rios's team and we see his Roaring Moon slightly different. It's booster energy, uh, but it's Protect, Tailwind, Acrobatics, and Jawlock. And uh, looking across the other side of the screen, Golden Go with that Leftovers Nasty Plot, Make It Rain, and Shadow Ball, a Pokemon that uh, came in absolutely crucial in Eric's win in top eight.
Yeah, that seemed to be the main damage dealer coming out for Eric in that top eight for sure. Being able to get those nasty plots and then do some massive damage and some massive predictions as well with that Flutter main being the victim to that Shadow Ball on the switch in. Very, very nicely done. Uh, so some very, very solid Pokemon coming out for both these players. Uh, notable point is that there's no Icy Wind on the Iron Bundle. That is going to be the move of choice to be replaced with Encore. Encore has come into play very much across this stream, so there's no surprise to see it on this Iron Bundle. Uh, the team is very, very bulky and some what slow, so Icy Winds doesn't particularly benefit a few of the Pokemon. The Tailwinds doubled the speed. Icy Wind is slightly worse speed control than Tailwind, so Tailwind seems to be enough for this Roaring Moon to help out the team. The Icy Winds doesn't appear to be necessary for Eric on that Iron Bundle. No, absolutely not. Um, Encore has wreaked havoc that we've seen coming out from Iron Bundles previously in this tournament, and uh, we can get into turn one now as it's Iron Hands and Amoongus for uh, Marco, and uh, it's the Iron Hands and Arcanine for Eric Rios as the Iron Hands on Marco's side takes an Intimidate drop from the Arcanine. Yeah, so a little bit of a slow paced turn coming out here. There's not going to be an, a massive amount of damage. It looks like we're going to be playing somewhat of a positioning game. But you've got the Intimidate on the Iron Hand, so that really doesn't want to be staying in here. Fake Out would be able to stop a Spore onto the opposing Amoongus, uh, so you'd be able to be able to stop that in regards to uh, stopping any Spores coming onto you. But Fake Outs, do you go for the Fake Out in in the fact that the Iron Hands could be going for the fake-out into each other. It's the gentleman's rule, right? You don't go for a fake-out into the opposing Iron Hands unless you know that you're definitely faster. Exactly. Uh, Arcanine is withdrawing for Eric, and it's Golden Go coming in instead. Uh, and uh, indeed, it's the Iron Hands for Eric being withdrawn as well. It's a double switch as Amoongus comes in instead. So uh, joining the field as uh, we get into another switch <laughs> from Marco, he withdraws his Amoongus. Both these players repositioning completely. Will it be the big four switch as Roaring Moon joins the field? The booster energy is activated um, using the Protosynthesis ability and it's the attack of this Roaring Moon that goes up first. And uh, it's Volt Switch coming out from Iron Hands into Golden Go. So it's not a hard switch, but it is still a switch for Marco as he brings in from the back another Pokemon that he's just deciding on at the moment. He has the luxury of deciding which Pokemon, given that Eric has just done a double switch, will be able to uh, either soak up, uh, soak up damage or deal the damage that he would like to be dishing out and at this point. I think that counts as four for four. Yeah. Well, it's, it's three, three hard switches and one, one Volt Switch. That, that definitely counts as all Pokemon on the field switching. Yeah. And like, like mentioned, this is going to be a very positional game. It, it seems to be what Eric was going for in that top eight as well. And the fact that he's gone for a double switch on that first turn definitely indicates that we're going to play a nice and slow game <laughs> to try and outposition the opponents. Garganaku was the Pokemon of choice for Marco joining the field. Uh, so that's not going to be threatened too much by the opposing Amoongus because that is going to be immune to the spores. But it's going to be threatened by the Golden Go. So you've got to contend with, do you need to go for wide guards to stop any make it rains? Or do you just get that Salt Cure going? Because if you get the Salt Cure on the Steel-type Golden Go, that's going to start to do some massive damage. And the fact that it's a Terra Water as well means that you can't Terra out of that extra damage that would be done because Salt Cure also does extra damage to Water types. So a Gargan the Garganacle is actually pr positioned pretty well here, so long as it can avoid to make it rain. So long as it can avoid indeed, and in fact it's Golden Go that switches out for Eric. Please let's not have a repeat of turn one where we just have <laughs> all the switches. Arcanine comes back in and it will drop the attack of Garganacle and indeed that roaring moon uh, <laughs> 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 and it's Amoongus stretching out for Eric he's playing it nice and slow just as he likes or as he seems to from that top eight match as Iron Hands joins the field but of course Marco's roaring moon is left free to go for a dragon dance so his attack is now back up to neutral plus the booster energy but it gets a speed boost thanks to the dragon dance as well salt cure coming out from Garganacle into the Arcanine it might not look like much damage even though it's a super effective hit but of course this is what Salt Cure is all about the residual damage that will absolutely stack up very nicely over time yeah that's still a good chunk into the Arcanine for mm. sure and you've counteracted the Intimidate with your Dragon Dance now maybe with the booster energy being an attack boost that might put the Arcanine in range of the Acrobatic should you want to go for it you've got to contend with the fact that the, uh, the Iron Hands is on the other side of the field so you do resist Electric if you don't go for Terra, but you are weak to it if you do. And opposingly, Fighting type would be very good into this uh, Roaring Moon if it doesn't Terra, but really bad if it does. Really bad if it does, as Eric again isn't quite happy with the board state, and he brings in his Amoongus for the Arcanine instead, able to bring in the Arcanine for a future Intimidate, as it's Roaring Moon going for a Protect, keeping itself safe this turn, as it's Wild Charge that was intending to go into the Roaring Moon, but of course it keeps itself safe on this turn. Another Salt Cure coming out from Garganacle into 
into the Amoongus. So uh, that will deal some nice chip damage that will uh, keep ticking away over the course of the match or as long as the Amoongus stays in. Yeah, and this chip damage is going to work out much better than the Glamora Woods because mm. the Amoongus wants to be switching in and out. If there was going to be any Toxic Spike set, Amoongus would be able to absorb them. So the fact that it's just Salt Cure being able to chip away everything very, very slowly is still going to be very, very nice for Marco because it's a very slow positional game. You're switching, like there's been five switches from Eric. On the six moves he could have made, five of them were switches. So being able to just slowly chip away at things is absolutely fine because there's been no damage dealt to Marco's side of the field in these first three turns. Absolutely, and it's Roaring Moon that switches out for Marco here. He's the one doing some repositioning in favor of his own Amoongus coming back out and joining the field. Uh, Eric's Amoongus goes for a Protect, not switching this particular turn. It keeps itself safe from uh, something that could be coming out from Garganacle as Volt Switch comes out from Iron Hands into Marco's Amoongus. It goes back to Eric. So on both sides of the field, little bits of chip happening and lots of repositioning as Eric decides which Pokemon in the back to bring in. And it will be that Golden Go again, but it has to contend with a wide guard that could come out from Garganacle. But it's Salt Cure coming out from Marco's Garganacle into the Golden Go, which again will chip away at that Pokemon over the course of the time that it's in battle. Leftovers will help out a little bit in terms of its HP recovery, but uh, the damage will add up. Yeah, it's a Steel type. Look at this chunk of damage that's going to happen. It's a quarter of its health, so really nice catch there onto the Golden Go. And you can see it's still chipping away at the Amoongus, not quite as much because it's not going to be a Water or a Steel type, but that's a significant amount of chip damage into the opposing Golden Go. Is that going to put it in range of the attack from the Roaring Moon? You've sacrificed your booster energy and you've sacrificed your Dragon Dance. So uh, you need to just come back in at what would be considered neutral for the uh, Roaring Moon at this point. But every little bit of chip damage is absolutely going to help. And if the Golden Go wants to be able to do some damage to this opposing Garganacle, that's probably the best way that Eric has of breaking through it. Then you've got to contend with the White Guard as well that could be coming out. And if you attack into the White Guard, that's just an extra round of Salt Cure that's really, really chipping away at this Golden Go. All the damage that's been dealt, this has been the f this is going into the fifth turn now, and the only damage that's been dealt on Marco's side of the field is a tiny bit of damage with the Volt Switch. So Eric does need to start finding some damage from somewhere. Yeah, he absolutely does. We get into this next turn, and it is another switch. Uh, Moongus into the Iron Hands. Uh, Garganacle also switches Marco. It's the double switch. It goes to show just how important positioning is when you're playing top-level VGC as Roaring Moon comes back in for Marco Silver. Uh, Golden Go for Eric is able to go for a nasty block, boosting its special attack by two stages. Uh, Amoongus is, though, able to get off a Spore into Marco's Iron Hands, so it will take a mandatory turn of sleep next time. It won't be able to... Uh, deal any damage uh, as Golden Go gets a little bit of leftover recovery, but here comes the Salt Cure damage. Yeah, absolutely. The more you leave it on the field, the more this is going to tick away. That's still just a huge chunk. It's very nice that you're able to catch that Iron Hand, so it's not going to be able to go for any of the fake outs, not going to be able to reposition with the Volt Switch. So nicely done to catch that with the Spore on the Switch in. But you still need to be able to do the damage. And if you're staying with the Golden Go and getting a Make It Rain, that'll do very, very nice damage to the opposing Roaring Moon. That will be another round of Salt Cure, though. And you can only take probably three more at this point, even for, with the leftovers helping to heal you. That really does not counteract this Salt Cure that really chips away at Steel types. And that's probably why the Golden Go is switching out here. Golden Go is switching out, getting rid of the Salt Cure damage. The Arcanine comes back in for Eric, and it's going to drop the attack of Roaring Moon. And for Iron Hands, it's a brilliant Pokemon to have in the back and also just switch in at any point to be able to do that. And it's actually a double switch for Eric as Amoongus goes back to its Pokeball. His own high Iron Hands comes back in at some point. Uh, Eric is going to have to do damage to Marco's team, but not quite yet as an Acrobatics comes out into Eric's Iron Hands. It uh, deals respectable damage, but there you can see it's not much at all. This very bulky Pokemon in the Iron Hands. Yeah, you haven't gone for the Terra Flying, so it's not going to get that extra damage boost. You've used up your booster energy. You don't have the attack boost anymore, but Acrobatics still benefits from the fact that there is no item there. That's a reasonable chunk of damage, and every bit of chip damage is absolutely going to help in this game because it seems like it is just a game of whittling away at your opponent and getting that slow, slow win that will eventually happen. But still, once again, what another switch out coming for Eric. Another switch out. It's that Amoongus. It gets some Regenerator HP back thanks to its ability. Roaring Moon goes for a Protect, and Iron Hands, in fact, wakes up this turn. A relatively early wake up is a Volt Switch into Eric's Amoongus, and it goes back to its trainer, Marco Silva, and he will be bringing in something from the back again, repositioning. But look, all his Pokemon are now on full health thanks to the Regenerator on his own Amoongus as well, and it's Garganacle coming back in. It's another Volt Switch from Eric's, uh, Eric's Iron Hands into 
into Garganhackle. It goes back. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, very much the uh, the format that this particular game seems to be following as his Golden Go comes back in, but it's still not able to get off a big make it rain thanks to the potential wide guard from a Garganhackle. I'm wondering here, are we going to be able to get more switches than attacks in this game? Yeah. Because it seems like that is entirely possible based yeah. on what is happening. Yeah, yeah. You kind of get a neutral one when you get a Volt Switch. That counts as an attack, but it's also a switch, so it kind of gets uh, a net neutral there. But yeah, Eric is still trying to reposition around Marco's team and really needs to start turning on the offense. It was nice that you got the support into the opposing Iron Hands. That's no longer uh, no longer come into play because it has woken up. You've allowed the Golden Goat to take a lot of damage here. At least you've got it back in without the Sulk here. You can go for a Rage Powder to keep it safe. This might be the position that Eric needs now because you can go for a Rage Powder. Even though the Acrobatics will do some significant damage to the Amoongus, that will be a nasty plot turn that Golden Goat could go for, go for and then be able to do the damage it needs because Make It Rain will do some significant damage, not enough. It probably does need that nasty plot to actually start turning on the offense, but not this turn. No, nope, it goes for a Protect. Eric really asserts himself as a player that nice to go nice and slow. As it's Acrobatics coming out from Roaring Moon into the Amoongus, dealing a good amount of health, but of course the Amoongus has that Berry equipped, is able to heal back a good amount of its health, it being a Citrus Berry. Amoongus is able to go for a Spore into the Roaring Moon, so that now does fall asleep. Yeah, this this is the this is the opportunity now that Eric has. That Soul Cure went into the Golden Go, so did not start to chip away at the Amoongus. This is the opportunity. The Roaring Moon is asleep. The Leftovers is going to start recovering that Golden Go. You won't be taking Salt Cure chip damage on that Golden Go. You get to go for a Rage Powder this turn and the Nasty Plot, and the offense is suddenly turned on. Many turns into this game, the damage can start to be done. You will always have to contend with the White Guard that could come out with the Garganacle, but you can still always just go for a Shadow Ball into the Garganacle, even though it's got the Purifying Salt. So long as you boost it enough, it will do significant damage. You can go for the Shadow Ball into the Partner Pokemon as well to avoid the White Guard. But a turn you're going for White Guard is a turn you're not going for Salt Cure. And you really want to land this Salt Cure onto the Golden Go. It's very well positioned now to be able to get its damage going with the Nasty Plot. Roaring Moon was the best Pokemon to be able to take care of that. And that is now asleep for the foreseeable future. So all of these repositionings, all of these turns switching in and out has finally got Eric into a position where he can really start to turn the offense with that Nasty Plot. And we'll have to see if that is the option he goes for as Iron Hands rejoins the field for uh, Marco. It's a Rage Powder coming out for Eric's Amoongus. And uh, Golden Go is able to go for a nasty plot here. So here we go. We're ramping up uh, towards potentially a uh, some decisive knockouts. We'll have to see as Assault Cure comes out again from Garganacle into Eric's Amoongus. And the residual damage will keep stacking up as Golden Go is able to heal back a little bit more HP thanks to the leftovers. And here comes the residual damage from the Salt Cure from Garganacle. That Amoongus now down to about a quarter of its health, but of course it can always just switch out to recover thanks to its regenerator ability. Yeah, absolutely. You don't particularly need to be keeping the, uh, the uh, Golden Ghost safe from the Garganacle, because if you're going for a Make It Rain, you're forcing a white guard and that is not a salt cure. Mm. So then you'll be able to keep yourself safe from the extra damage from that. You can still take damage from a wild charge and the, the, both, the iron hand is gonna be able to shrug off and make it rain very easily, but you need to be able to deal with this Garganak. If you take care of that and take care of the white guard, there is nothing going to stop this golden go from just good turning on the offense and doing massive damage. The roaring moon is asleep and guaranteed to sleep uh, at this point because it hasn't taken a mandatory turn to sleep either. Amoongus there, gonna be able to switch out, get that regenerator and get rid of the salt cure that was put on it. And it's Arcanine that comes back in for Eric, and it's going to deal an Intimidate drop to both of the physical attackers on Marco's side. Indeed, the Pokemon he has in the back. Roaring Moon, also a physical attacker, so uh, that Intimidate paying dividends there for Eric. And it's a Terra coming out for Marco Silver. It's into his Golden Go. It goes into the Ghost type. So it will now be immune to, for example, normal type moves, fighting type moves. It's a really good defensive terror option here. And of course, it removes its oh, super effective weakness to steal. Golden Go, in fact, going for a protect here. It's Volt Switch coming out from Marco's Iron Hands into the Arcanine. It goes back to uh, Marco and he's able to bring in a Pokemon from the back of his choice. And now he can see the board state. He'll, to, he'll be able to really consider what it is he wants to bring in. Hovering over that asleep Roaring Moon, and that is indeed what he goes for. It's going to have to wake up at some point, and the only way it can wake up is by being on the field. Salt Cure attempts to go into Golden Go for Eric, but of course, it remains safe thanks to its protect. Yeah. And it's the leftovers recovery there for the Golden Go as well. Very, very nicely done there. You're going to be able to get the Roaring Moon in and try and start to burn those turns of sleep. That's the best way you have of breaking through this Golden Go if you are not able to get a Salt Cure onto it. 
but this is a turn that you could potentially because now you're not going to be weak to the Make It Rain. Even though you are technically taking a super effective hit from a Shadow Ball, potentially, that's countered by the Purifying Salt halving the damage from the Ghost-type attacks. So the Garganacle should be able to make it through this turn and get a Salt Cure off if it does want to. If it's concerned about the Make It Rain, then it can go for the White Guard and keep the Roaring Moon safe. If White Guard is clicked, then Roaring Moon is not taking significant damage this turn because it's asleep, it can't be burned, and then you can't go for a Make It Rain. It would have to just be a Shadow Ball, but that's resisted as well. So still a very, very nice position for Marco there, but not too concerned about getting that room to wake up anytime soon. It's switching out once again, so it's, when it comes back in, it's still got a man to return to sleep. Absolutely, and it is Make It Rain coming out from the Golden Go. Big damage onto the Garganacle, uh, eating up a special attack drop there, of course, as well. And it's Flare Blitz coming out from Eric's Arcanine. It's the Garganacle not able to pick up the knockout. Uh, Garganacle is down to 30 HP, and Garganacle does go for a Salt Cure into the Golden Go, and uh, it doesn't deal much damage there at all, but of course it will take more damage from Salt Cure uh, as the residual damage stacks up. It is able to recover a little bit of HP with that leftovers, but uh, uh, at last, and make it rain coming out from the Golden Go as Garganacle also takes some leftovers recovery, but yes, a lot of damage onto the Garganacle that turn. Yeah, absolutely. But we see a Pokemon finally put into the red in this game after so many <laughs> turns, uh, but then leftovers on the Garganacle putting it straight back out of that. Still very much in range of a Flare Blitz though, based on the damage that the Arcanine did previously, another the Flare Blitz should be able to pick up the KO there. So you've got to be concerned about that on Marco's side of the field. You could go for a Fake Out to be able to stop the Arcanine from going for a Flare Blitz. That's if you assume the Golden Go wants to switch out the Salt Cure. Because if you just go for a Fake Out into the Arcanine and another Make It Rain is clicked, then that is Garganacle taken care of once again. So you've got to be careful if you do go for that Fake Out play. But at the same time, if the Golden Go does switch out, then that Fake Out would work out very nicely because you can get another potential Salt Cure onto anything that switches in. Or maybe do the extra damage onto the Arcanine that might put it into that Salt Cure range as well. It does have have that berry that it does have the Agua berry that hasn't activated because it hasn't gone down to quarter of its health yet. Protect from the Garganacle will make it through it survive through this turn though. It absolutely will. Garganacle keeping itself safe as it was a Shadow Ball coming out from Golden Go into that slot, which Garganacle would have gone down to. Arcanine goes for a Will O Wisp into Marco's Iron Hands. So it will now have its attack stat halved. That's not a position you want to be in. It won't be able to deal out the damage that it wants to. It's Volt Switch coming out from uh, Iron Hands for Marco into the Arcanine. Arcanine is now down to about a quarter of its health as Marco is again able to reposition and consider which Pokemon he wants to bring in from the back. Will it be that sleeping Roaring Moon trying to burn some more turns of sleep? Or will it be that Amoongus in the back there? Yeah, I just want to take a second to appreciate that there's no no four green bars there. There is a Pokemon that has taken a significant chunk of damage because uh, that is once again another switch. Still curious on which is going to win. Amount of switches or amount of attacks here because that is still very much the game to be playing, the repositioning game. Uh, Amoongus coming back in. The leftovers happening on both of the Pokemon here. Going to start to recover. Maybe the Garganacle is going to be out of Flebit's range. It's going to be very close. If it gets one more leftovers, it almost certainly will be out of Flebit's range. It's going to be incredibly close based on the HP it is and the moment and the damage that the Arcanine had done previously. Uh, the Golden Goat has once again started to be chipped away very nicely with the Salt Cure down into the yellow as well. And that was a three minutes left and we haven't had a single KO in this game. So we might have the fabled 4-4 in this game. That would be an incredible sight to see. Oh my goodness. Three minutes left in that in this battle. If the time runs out, it will come down to how many Pokemon are remaining on either side of the field. So <laughs> both of these trainers now have a little warning signal that they might just want to put all of their energy into conserving as many Pokemon as possible. But uh, uh, at least we did see some damage dealt in this game. <laughs> I can only really recall one turn where a significant amount was dealt from that. Make it rain as it's Arcanine switching out for Eric Rios, bringing in his Amoongus instead. That regenerator able to recover some HP. Garganacle coming back for Marco. And instead, hitting the field, it is the Iron Hand, which of course is burned, not able to deal the damage it might want to. Amoongus for Marco going for Protect, keeping itself safe. And uh, all eyes now on the Golden Go, which goes for a Shadow Ball into Marco's Iron Hands. There's two minutes left until the battle ends. It, Iron Hands takes that damage really, really well. Golden Go able to recover some HP thanks to its leftovers. Yeah, so that's going to still be on the field. It's still going to take that Salt Cure damage. And it, it, that's a few Pokemon in the yellow for Eric. That's down to the red now for the Golden Go. And only really one Pokemon, the Garganak, was taking significant damage. The Iron Hands is down to half HP. This could be a turn for just going for the Pollen Puffs, though. Because if yeah. you Pollen Puff yourself back up, that's going to really come into play in this uh, turn to Cider. Because this, this game is definitely not being decided by four KOs, yeah. for sure. There is no chance of that happening. Especially, actually, spotting Marco's your time as well. That's incredibly low. Incredibly Need to keep low. that in mind as well. Uh, you don't have a couple... You've got, like, what? One 
two, maybe two more turns. You just got to input your moves pretty fast here at this point and see how much damage you can do to the opposing side of the field. Yeah, Arcanine is coming back in Golden Go, switching out before it took that final chip of uh, Salt Cure and uh, Intimidate drop onto Iron Hands. Fake out onto the Amoonga so it won't be able to move this turn. And there's the 60 second timer as Pollen Puff comes out from Marco's Amoongus into the Iron Hands. So it will be able to heal up the Iron Hands a little bit. It takes a bit of burn damage, but at this stage of the game, uh, healing up your health is absolutely crucial as Marco has to lock in his moves really quick now. Yeah, you got five seconds. You got to make a move. You got to be able to input it something. Oh, just about in time. So this will go into the timer, it would seem, unless Eric has run out of your time as well, potentially. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it seems like we have locked into these turns here. It should come down to this deciding turn. Yeah. Can there be a KO on this turn? Flebitz at least went into the Iron Hands, and that's a nice chunk of damage for sure. So every bit of chip damage is going to be able to help. And a recovery from your Agua Bray is certainly going to help as well. Absolutely going to help Arcanine now back up to about 50% of its HP. Close combat coming out from Iron Hands into the Arcanine. It is, of course, burned to its attacks. That is not what it once was. It takes defense drops thanks to the recoil of the close combat. And another side pull and puff from Eric's Amoongus into the Arcanine, bringing it back up to a good amount of health. And it... All comes down to how much health is remaining for these trainers. Marco literally has no time left to lock in his move, so we'll yeah. have to yeah, see. Yeah, the, the timer was done. So is the your time. I'm pretty sure I saw zero seconds on the on the actual timer rather than your time. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to see which which player is going to have more HP here and who is going to be able to take this game. It is a 4-4 end to this game. There has been no KOs. It's coming come down to percentage of HP, and it would seem oh. that Marco <laughs> oh. had more HP than oh. Eric and is going to take this first game without dealing a single KO. <laughs> What an absolutely incredible first game of this second semi-final match. Not a single KO, it all came down to health percentage and Marco Silva was able to clinch that out against Eric Rios. Eric is someone who we've seen so far today, he, uh, enjoys going for slower games, but it really came back to cost him there. Yeah, you could surely hear the crowd reaction there. Uh, <laughs> that was a very, very, very exciting <laughs> game to end to that game for sure. One second left of your time as well. Marco yeah. was one second away from losing that game managed to input the moves quickly enough just about in time that was definitely a slog fest for that one <laughs> lots of switches i'm pretty sure switches ended up winning over attacks in that game yeah surely some offense has to be turned on a lot sooner going into this second game here because that was just posi reposition reposition surely you've got to be content with your position at some point <laughs> and just start attacking the main attacks coming out there was salt cure that, mm. that, does ja that does damage, it chips away at things, yeah. but it doesn't do significant damage. There was a big make it rain, we saw a plus two make it rain, and that was about it. All the other recovery, was uh, like all the other damage, was just recovered by Pollen Puff and Regenerator, and the leftovers on both sides of the field. So, there needs to be some offense. There definitely needs to be some more offense coming out in this game. That could potentially be in the form of the curse from the Mimikyu. That would be able to chip away a lot with the Salt Cure. The Roaring Moon got put to sleep, sacrificed its booster energy, and wasn't being able to do the offense it needed to, and just got switched in, switched out, or didn't take any turns of sleep, so it can't wake up and can't do the damage. That was the main damage dealer that was brought on Marco's side of the field. Maybe you need to bring the Iron Bundle and the Roaring Moon if you're Eric's side of the field as well. That will do more damage than the Amoongus and the Arcanine will as well. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, longest game we could possibly have in that game one. We'll have to see if there's any kind of adaptations or we're going to see if switches are going to win once again. Yeah, it's the longest game we could have had, but it was exciting in its own way in a different kind of Pokemon battle as we get into this game too. Will it be super quick to compensate? We'll have to see as it's Iron Hands and Roaring Moon for Marco and it's Golden Go and Arcanine for Eric. And both of the Pokemon on Marco's side take that Intimidate drop and they're both physical attackers. Not something they want to do, but we do see the booster energy heightening the attack of this Protosynthesis Roaring Moon. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd probably give the position to Eric here because you've got the Intimidate down on both of the physical attackers. That could open up the Golden Go to go for its nasty plot on this first turn if you're content taking that minus one throat chop. You could go for your Terra immediately, but then that would put you weak to the electric type attacks that could come from Iron Hands. Uh, but you've got the Intimidate. Why would you need to stay on the field when you could switch out? Especially when you're Eric Rios and it's his own Iron Hands joining the field and it is an immediate nasty plot from the Golden Go. So we may well be putting the pedal to the metal far sooner in this game. Gets a sharp boost to its special attack, but Roaring Moon responds with a stat boost of its own in the attack and speed. 
thanks to the Dragon Dance that it's gone for there. And it's Volt Switch, uh, the move of choice, it seems, <laughs> from the previous couple of games, uh, for Marco's Iron Hands into Eric's own Iron Hands. A little bit of chip damage, but of course, again, now Marco is able to assess the board state and consider what he wants to bring in from the back. Yeah, it seems like it is going to be that Garganacle, but that was a very important piece of information revealed on that first turn. The Golden Go outsped the Roaring Moon on the very first turn. It obviously mm. won't now that the Dragon Dance has been uh, set on the field uh, for, for the Roaring Moon. It's definitely going to be outspeeding with the plus one. But that is not a very common interaction for sure. Roaring Moon is significantly faster than Golden Go naturally. So that must be like almost no investment into the speed, probably counteracting the fact that you can just go for a Dragon Dance and fix that. And the Golden Go is trained incredibly fast to be able to outspeed even just not very fast Roaring Moon to begin with. So very, very important piece of information revealed there. Uh, now you can start to turn the offense. Both play players have gone for a setup move. That means that Golden Go will do massive damage. That means that the Roaring Moon will be able to do massive damage as well. And it's Iron Hands that joins the field in place of the Garganacle as it protects from Roaring Moon, uh, keeping itself safe this turn as uh, Iron Hands for Eric is going for the fake out into that protected Roaring Moon. So this Iron Hands might have to take some damage from the Golden Go and it will be a make it rain, a move that uh, it resists. But of course, this Golden Go has plus two in its special attack. But <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that. That's Massive hardly, damage. Hardly any health dealt, uh, health dealt from that Golden Go and just goes to show how bulky Iron Hands is, and uh, especially when it's wearing that Assault Vest. Yeah, well, every bit of chip helps, especially in this set, for sure. Uh, we saw it come down to timer previously, so every bit of chip damage is absolutely going to whittle away at the percentage of the opponent's HP. Absolutely, and it's uh, Golden Go switching out, in fact, sacrificing that special attack boost, double boost, as Arcanine rejoins the field, drops the attack of both the Roaring Moon and the Iron Hands. Fake out coming out onto Eric's own Iron Hands. It's a throat chop from Roaring Moon onto the Arcanine. That's really good damage considering it's a neutral attack. Uh, and of course, we see the flinch because of the fake out there. So yeah, good amount of health dealt already now. Yeah, that was damage. Yep. That's what we could consider damage. So yep. very nicely done to get that onto the Arcanine already. Uh, maybe getting another Dragon Dance here could be beneficial for the Roaring Moon to counteract once again, taking that Intimidate. Uh, do you have the opportunity to do that in front of the Iron Hands? You've always got the prediction of being going for the Terror or not, because you resist or are super effective against either of the moves that the Iron Hands want to go for. You also have to be careful of the will that could come out from the Arcanine, but of course not when it's switching once again. And it does switch, and in favor of the Golden Go coming back in for the Arcanine. Uh, Roaring Moon keeping itself safe this turn, going for a Protect, scouting out what's going to happen here as it's Iron Hands Volt Switch into Eric's own Iron Hands. Once again, it goes back to Marco, and he will bring in one of the Pokemon from the back, either that Garganacle or the Amoongus in it. Very quick lock in of the Garganacle there. He knows that is the Pokemon he wants to bring in at this point. Uh, another Volt Switch from Eric's Iron Hands into that very Garganacle that switched in going back to its trainer and uh, Eric will now be in the same position where he's able to consider which Pokemon he wants to bring in and it will be the Arcanine for another Intimidate attack drop onto the Roaring Moon and the Garganacle. So those drops are really stacking up now. Yeah, it's going to really, really hamper the damage output from this Roaring Moon. Maybe you want to consider switching it out at this point, but you do have a speed boost on your Roaring Moon and you've seen that the Golden Go outspeeds your Roaring Moon if you don't have the speed boost. So something to keep in mind. Do you want to switch out, reset all of those stat drops or do you want to just keep taking Dragon Dance to get a boost back up? Or do you just want to go on the offense and you're content with taking the Intimidate drops and doing some damage? Because some damage is absolutely necessary in winning this match. So uh, you're not particularly threatened too much on the Roaring Moon. The Golden Go wasn't going to be doing too much and didn't want to take Throat Chop or the Salt Cure. So that's why it's switching out once again into the Iron Hands. Yeah, there's one thing the last game taught us is that damage is better than no damage. And it's Throat Chop coming out into Iron Hands for Eric. Uh, Will-O-Wisp is able to connect from his Arcanine into the Roaring Moon. So its own attacks that will be halved now, even less than uh, what it was before. Uh, Garganacle going for a Salt Cure into Eric's Iron Hands. A little bit of chip damage, but that residual damage will start to rack up as uh, we see the leftovers recovery from Marco's Garganacle all the way back up to full health as Iron Hands will take some Salt damage after the burn damage on the Will-O-Wisp roaring moon. Yeah, absolutely. We're starting to get back to this chip away at the opponent's kind of game <laughs> again. And Roaring Moon is no longer a threat. It's mm. been intimidated multiple times. It is now burned. It's not going to do the damage. It would have been one of the main ways of breaking through the opposing Golden Go. Now that that's been burned, Golden Go will be quite free to set up once again with the Nasty Plot. You're going to be able to do some okay damage with the Wild Charges coming out from the Iron Hands. You will definitely be able to chip away if you can get those Salt Cures off into the Golden Go as well. 
So now that you've got the will o -Wisp onto the Roaring Moon, you should be feeling a bit more comfortable on, on Eric's side of the field because that was the main way of doing significant damage. Because of the Dragon Dance, you could have set up. Because of the booster energy, you got the attack boost. That was significant damage. We saw it do good damage into the Arcanine previously with the Throat Shot, but can't do good damage now. Going to at least reset the Intimidates by get switching out once again into the Iron Hands. Into the Iron Hands, which rejoins the field as Eric switches out his own Arcanine, ready for another Intimidate drop that he could bring in at any point from the back. But for now, it's a Moongus that comes in for Eric, joining the field, able to provide some support, perhaps, for its partner, Iron Hands, as we see a Terra coming out for uh, Marco into that Garganacle, going back into that Ghost type. This was his Terra of choice in game one as well. Uh, so this Garganacle has changed its type. It, its type. It will be able to deal out some damage as well as take some attacks better as a Drain Punch comes out into Marco's Iron Hands and, of course, will be able to recover some health for Eric's own Iron Hands. Salt Cure coming out again into uh, Eric's Iron Hands. Just keep shipping away this bulky Pokemon. It takes that Salt Damage on this turn. It's down to just above half of its health. It's still chipping away, Jamie, but it's slightly more health being taken away than in the first game. Yeah, it does seem like there's been more chip damage overall across this game so far. Now, both Iron Hands are about the same HP. They've taken roughly the same amount of damage. Uh, being able to go for Drain Punch, that's one of the key things here because chipping away at the opponent while recovering yourself as well is very, very impactful in terms of the percentage KOs that you need to be able to get in order to win on time once again. Because one, this is still a very, very drawn out game. There's still been no KOs. So there's the, ti the potential of going to, your, to the timer once again is entirely reasonable because you're still just in the chip away at the opponent stage. Once yeah. the Golden Go hits the field, that could be some Master Pots. It is switching in for the Iron Hands. That can be the Master Pots once again now that you burn the uh, Roaring Moon, and you'll be able to keep it safe and get that damage going. Absolutely, and even more safe when Amoongus goes for Rage Powder, as we see there, as Volt Switch comes out from Marco's Iron Hands into the Amoongus. Tiny little bit of chip damage as Marco is able to bring in a Pokemon from the back. Reassessing this board state. Is it going to be the burned Roaring Moon, or will it be his Amoongus? He's considering there uh, which one to bring in. He's hovering over that Roaring Moon and it will indeed be the Roaring Moon. It comes back in. It's still burned, but it doesn't have those Intimidate drops anymore. As Assault Cure comes out from his uh, Garganacle into the Amoongus, more uh, chip damage there, and that, that, that Salt will continue to rack up over time as Roaring Moon takes some burn chip as well. Yeah, there is nothing stopping a Rage Powder and a Nasty Pot this turn. You can switch out in the Arcanine. You get the Regenerator and sacrifice, uh, not sacrifice, get rid of the Salt Cure that is on the Amoongus at the moment. But if you do that, you'll still take a reasonable amount of damage from the Throat Chop, and you could allow a Salt Cure to be hit onto the opposing Golden Ghost. So you've got a choice now. Do you uh, like allow even more damage onto the opposing Mo or onto the Amoongus, which does seem what Eric is going for, because that will allow you to get the offense going with your Nasty Plot. Yeah, and that's something he will absolutely be angling to do. And there it is. He goes for another Nasty Bot. Of course, this Golden Ghost rejoined the field, so it's still just at the plus two of its special attack. Acrobatics from the Roaring Moon is really good damage, even with the burner. It is a critical hit as well, so it deals more health than it would have been able to do. But Amoongus is uh, able to recover a little bit thanks to its Citrus Berry, still just below half health. Uh, another Salt Cure coming out from Garganacle. Of course, this Amoongus is going to be able to switch out and recover some HP thanks to its Regenerator ability as Roaring Moon takes a little bit more chip with that burn. Yeah, and this is where the speed interaction may come into play with the Golden Go and the Roaring Moon. We've seen now that the Golden Go is consistently moving for that Roaring Moon before it's gone for a Dragon Lance. That means you can just launch off and make it rain here that could do some massive damage. You always have to contend with the fact that Garganak can go, can go for a White Guard, though. If you go for a Shadow Ball and avoid the White Guard, that's not doing that much damage to the Roaring Moon. It's positioned pretty well, but if you do go for White Guard, Roaring Moon is somewhat safe. But you're not doing too much damage back because you allowed the Roaring Moon to get burned. So Throat Chop will do pretty reasonable damage to the, the opposing Golden Go, but it will start to be recovered off by the Leftovers. If you can get a Salt Cure onto the Golden Go once again, that would be very, very beneficial as well. That would mean that the Amoongus would have to switch out this turn to get the Regenerator, which it may want to do, but it may just go for a Rage Powder this turn to allow the Golden Go to go on the offense. But no, why were we ever questioning it? Amoongus <laughs> is going to switch out. So Amoongus does switch out and will be able to recover some HP thanks to the Regenerator ability as Arcanine rejoins the field and drops the attack of Amoongus and the uh, Garganacle. Um, and Make It Rain does come out from the Golden Go into both these Pokemon. It's really, really good damage. Amoongus and Garganacle now on about a third to a quarter of their HP, but of course it activates Amoongus's Berry, so it recovers back up to just over half 
of its health. Uh, Salt Cure coming out from uh, Garganacle into the Golden Go. Not much damage there, but the residual damage certainly will be something not to be ignored. Yeah, absolutely. Really good damage. Such a good phrase to hear in this match. That was significant damage. That was over 100% of a Pokemon's HP's worth of damage, doing over half to both the Garganacle and the Amoongus. That's what can happen if you do uh, get into the position to set up your Golden Go. You're back to plus one at this point. You're still going to do very good damage. The Amoongus probably out of range of an attack that the Golden Go would want to go for because of its berry, because you're now only at plus one rather than the plus two. That was significant damage with the plus two, probably out of range. Maybe the Shadow Ball being single target might be able to pick up the knockout on the Amoongus, make it rain. You've got to be careful of the Y guards always when you're facing down the opposing Garganacle. So maybe you want to just switch out your, go your Golden Go. You've done some very good damage. Maybe you get rid of the Salt Cure now so that you don't take that extra residual damage. But Garganacle, Garganacle switching out first implies the Golden Go is staying on the field this turn. Staying on the field perhaps as Rory Moon comes back in for Marco Silva. His Amoongus goes for a Protect keeping itself safe for the next turn. And it's another nasty plot coming out from Golden Go. It's really setting up here. Could be a very decisive sweeping end to the match. We will have to see as Flare Blitz was coming out into the Amoongus, but of course it keeps itself safe. And uh, Golden Go gets that leftovers recovery, but again, there will be that uh, salt, uh, salt damage chipping away as well, as well as the burn chip onto this Roaring Moon. And it's fascinating that in neither game has Garganacle, I believe, ever gone for a wide guard. No, it hasn't. It has the opportunity. That's yeah. two times it's taken to make it rain where it doesn't, didn't necessarily need to. But I think uh, the getting the Salt Cure off is very important onto the Golden Go as well. You can see now it's almost taken half of its damage as well. Things are chipped. This is actual damage on Pokemon, <laughs> which is really, really good. But again, the Golden Go outspeeds the Roaring Moon. There is no wide guard this turn. So Amoongus is just protected. If you go for a Make It Rain, now you're at plus three because of another very good nasty plot coming out from the Golden Go. Something is going to be KO'd in that slot unless it's an Iron Hand switching in. That's the only Pokemon that will be able to struggle off that attack. But if you catch that switching in with a Shadow Ball into the Amoongus slot, that's guaranteed. The Amoongus has gone for a Protect. You would have to go for a Double Protect to stop that. If you go for a Shadow Ball, that slot is almost certainly KO'd. A phrase we haven't said for a long time. <laughs> what is this KO of which you speak? As Arcanine withdraws in favor of the Iron Hands on Eric's side coming back in. And Amoonga switches out for Marco. He'll be able to regenerate some of that HP as uh, Iron Hands come back, uh, comes back in for Marco as well. And we see a Terror coming out from Eric. Will it be that Golden Go? Yes, it surely will. A Terror into the Golden Go, into the Water type. A nice defensive Terror type here for the Golden Go. It's that plus three special attack, and now it can keep itself a little bit more defensive as well with the Water Terror. It's a big make it rain coming out from Golden Go, and there it's a it knockout. We have a knockout, ladies and gentlemen. And you can hear the crowd as well. <laughs> we are so excited the crowd. that Pokemon are being KO'd here. <laughs> the crowd goes wild for something that should be expected from a Pokemon <laughs> match, but something we haven't been able to show for uh, <laughs> at least uh, half an hour or so <laughs> as we see leftovers recovery onto the Golden Go and Salt more damage taken away from it. But my goodness, it's put in some work that turn. And uh, Marco, this is another phrase I didn't think I'd be saying, but resources are being lost. Yeah, it would seem so. That is actual damage coming out from the Golden Go. Obviously a plus three make it rain. That is going to hurt for sure. But now you're back at plus two. Probably still going to be able to put uh, get, get a KO with the Shadow Ball into the Iron Hands. Probably not into the Amoongus. You've gone for the Terror though and now you can be faked out because you're no longer a ghost type. So that's something to consider uh, going forward with Eric because if you didn't Terra that turn, you could have left your Golden Go on the field. You could have gone for a Shadow Ball into the Iron Hand slot and probably got a KO. But the fact that you've been Salt Cured as well means that you want to be switching out into this Arcanine instead. Yes, absolutely. Arcanine rejoins the field and gets an Intimidate drop onto Iron Hands and the Amoongus. Uh, fake out coming out from Marco's Iron Hands into Eric's own Iron Hands, causing a flinch, of course, won't be able to move. But Spore coming out from Marco's Amoongus into the uh, Iron Hands. So we're uh, slowing down the the pace of this game. No, <laughs> just no, as that's was, not what we want to hear. <laughs> just as it was beginning to get going, but of course, Marcus is uh, Marco is dealing with uh, one Pokemon knocked out as opposed to Eric's four Pokemon remaining. And uh, I think relatively soon we might be getting into the uh, three minutes until battle ends mark. So it may well again come down to number of knockouts that these trainers are able to get. Yes, number of knockouts. Yeah. There is at least one. Yeah. That is absolutely fantastic here. The Arcanine's actually in a pretty good position. It's not switching out. It's going 
going on the offense here, most likely. Flare Blitz would have done very good damage to the Iron Hands, maybe picks up the KO. And Amoongus, that will do some serious damage to that if that does not go for Protect here. But it's Arcanine that's going to be starting off with a Protect instead. Arcanine goes for the Protect, and Amoongus attempts to spore into that slot as well. Why not in this position? Uh, all eyes now will turn to this Garganacle, um, which uh, gets its leftovers recovery of course. So it's now up to about a uh, half of its health again. So uh, even though Marco has lost a Pokemon, his own Pokemon, the ones he has remaining, are slowly recovering. Garganacle has been very well positioned now mm. because it's going to be able to get a recover. Doesn't have to contend with any of the will -Wisps. It doesn't ma matter too much if you take a Flare Blitz. So Arcanine does not want to stay on the field. Here is something I've said multiple times. Here comes the Iron Hands once again. Here comes the Iron Hands, and it's going to be healed back up to full health by the Amoongus. Uh, it is still asleep, but at least it's able to heal up a little bit as a uh, follow-up follow up, Pollen Puff comes out from Marco's Amoongus into Eric's own. Another Salt Cure from the Garganacle, so it will take some Salt damage at the end of this turn, as uh, Garganacle did not, in fact, go for the recover, of course, but it is able to recover a little bit of HP with the leftovers. And here comes the Salt for the Amoongus. It's not going to be quite enough. Yeah, that's in the red, though. Yeah. That could be a KO on <laughs> Eric's side of the field. That would be very good to see once again. Uh, this, it, so the girl and Ackle, it could have gone for a cover. Doesn't particularly need to. It's not threatened. The Iron Hands is still asleep. Shouldn't be able to do some da damage to the opposing Garganacle. You can go for a Pollen Puffing yourself to be able to get the recover, and that would be able to go for the Salt Cure that could be hitting the Pokemon that is switching in here. Moongus has switched out, got the Regenerator. And now in comes the Arcanine. If you're going for a Salt Cure into that slot, that will do super effective damage and then extra chip as well. Extra chip as well, indeed, and it is Arcanine that comes back in. Uh, Moongus will recover some HP thanks to its Regenerator. Iron Hands for Eric takes a turn of sleep. Pollen Puff comes out. This isn't going to do much damage at all to the Arcanine, but it does bring it down to the orange, which for this match is a really exciting thing. There's oh, the there three-minute timer. As a Salt Cure comes out, it's super effective hit onto the Arcanine. The Arcanine is really quite low now on its health, as uh, the same cannot be said for the Garganacle, which has uh, taken three, I believe, uninterrupted turns of leftovers recovery. And here comes the Salt damage on the Arcanine. That is... Uh, th that could... That's in range for most Pokemon to knock it out, but here's the berry as well. That pinch berry in the form of the Aguav berry, bring it up to about a third of its health. That also could have been a free spore there, potentially, for Marcos and Mingus into that slot. It definitely could have been, yeah, absolutely. But you need to be able to pick up a KO here. Spore's not good enough. Mm. Three minutes is left, or less than three minutes, probably closing on two minutes now, and you need a KO. It's 4-3 at the moment. But there's, it doesn't matter about percentage of HP if you have the Pokemon advantage. Eric still has all four Pokemon. In order for Marco to be able to take this game, there must be a KO. He's still got reasonable amounts of HP on all his Pokemon. There's going to be some Pokemon still in the red for Eric. Well, actually, the Amoongus would have been in the red, but it's no longer going to be thanks to that Regenerator. So, needs to f find some kind of offense here. Garganacle and Amoongus are not the Pokemon to do it because they're going to slowly chip away at the opponent. And you don't need chip this time. You need offense right now. You need offense right now, as we just saw the two-minute mark hit the screen. It's Amoongus that comes back in for Eric. It's just above half of its health now, and uh, it's Iron Hands that wakes up for Eric. It's a Drain Punch com coming out, pitiful damage into the Amoongus, but it will recover uh, some health at least. Pollen Puff coming back in to that slot as well. And uh, Gargana goes for that Salt Cure into the Iron Hands. It's going to be able to take this like a champ as well. And uh, yeah, Marco really needs to get some kind of knockout here. But uh, uh, these aren't the Pokemon that, m that might be able to provide it. But then again, he will have to reposition and switch in as uh, Iron Hands uh, takes some Salt damage. Yeah, no, there's no chance for it at this point. So yeah. you need, you've probably got one more turn left, maybe two if you're lucky, but you're still not going to break through the Amoongus or the Iron Hands with just the Garganacle that goes for Salt Cure to eventually win, and the Amoongus that just spores things and heals yourself with Pollen Puff as well. You can see there, there is going to be only one more turn in this match, and Garganacle and Amoongus not going to do it. So this is going to be going into a game three. We've had two incredibly long games so far. Are going to go to time for both of these. There was at least a KO there. So it's not <laughs> going to be a 4-4-4-4 four, 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 and then maybe another 4-4. Four, four. At least there's been a KO in this game. Oh, there has been a KO. Remember those times. <laughs> uh, as we see Drain Punch and uh, a bit of recovery for Iron Hands on Eric's side. Pollen Puff attempting to come into Eric's own Amoongus, which keeps itself safe. Oh, and the Salt Cure coming out from Marco's Garganacle, which again goes into the Amoongus. Yeah, Marco has lost a Pokemon. Eric's four Pokemon are still healthy. I was hope I was thinking that perhaps we'd have a really decisive um, pace to this game, completely turning the tables on the previous game. It seemed game, like there uh, could have been. Exactly, yeah, but uh, that's not what we had, and we will be heading into a game three of this nail-biter. Yeah, the, the offense was turned on. 
when the Golden Girl went for a plus three, make it rain. That was a mm. great turn. Yeah. But then the Golden Girl switched out afterwards because it had to take the Salt Cure in order to be able to get that uh, nasty, those nasty pots up. But yeah, that's, that's going to be the end of that game. It's gone to time once again, but it's now going into a game three. Oh, it's game three for both of these trainers. Maybe this will be the time when it's no longer so positional. And it, God, the uh, the mental resiliation that both these trainers have to have at this point. Who is going to let it slip just that little bit sooner? Who is going to allow the uh, opponent to come out on top? We'll have to see as we get into this game three. But what a testament to the matching skill of both of these trainers. The fact that they've eked out this game up to a game three with two full 20-minute matches so far. Yeah, absolutely. But I think that there is, like, I'll, I'll mention it again, very important information that the Golden Go outspeeds the Roaring Moon. That is not a very common thing in the slightest. Even just a little bit of investment on Roaring Moon means that you definitely outspeed a Golden Go. But it seems like Marco is content with Dragon Dance solving that issue of, I don't have any speed. I'll invest in bulk. I'll be able to do more offense, maybe. But the fact that the Golden Go outspeeds came into play in that game. We were able to seal that, and then the plus three make it rain was able to outspeed the Roaring Moon, even though it was burned, and it would have done good damage with the Throat Chop. The fact that that couldn't happen meant that the Golden Go was allowed to stay on the field for a couple more turns and not care about the Salt Cure as much. If it took the Throat Chop, it would have had to be concerned. It would have had to switch out sooner. Maybe it wouldn't have been able to go for the plus three make it rain. But the fact that Golden Go outspeeds means that that was KO was able to be possible, and that is... Very, very nice. It's uh, very nice indeed, and absolutely something that will be at the forefront of Marco's mind as they uh, get into this game three. Of course, will o -Wisp was going into that Roaring Moon in the previous game, halving its uh, damage output, which happened to the Iron Hands, I believe, in game one. Uh, so again, Eric aiming to slow down wherever possible. Both these trainers have access to an Amoongus for some spores that will slow down the game further. But uh, it's, maybe this will be the game where we stop talking about slowing down. We'll just have to see. Uh, maybe there'll be a little bit of an incremental uh, boost to the damage dealt as it's Iron Hands and Arcanine being led going into this game three of our second semi-final at the Utrecht Special Event 2023. It's Intimidate coming out of course from Arcanine into Roaring Moon and Garganacle on Marco's side and Booster Energy activating the Protosynthesis on uh, Roaring Moon for Marco and bolstering its attack. Yeah, but the fact you've led with the Roaring Moon means you'd use the Booster Energy immediately mm. and you've used it straight into the Intimidate of the Arcanine. Yeah. So you're going to want to either start boosting with the Dragon Lances, which is risky in the face of the Will-O-Wisp. You can't yeah. let the Roaring Moon get Will-O-Wisp once again. The fact that that's got Will-O-Wisp and couldn't do the damage output anymore freed up the Golden Go to be able to get those nasty spots. You can't allow yourself, yourself to get will o -Wisps, but you've led in front of the Arcanine. You need to be able to Dragon Lance do damage, but that will give a free turn to be able to get the Will-O-Wisp off. And you can't do damage as well because you're forced to protect. You're forced to protect, and Roaring Moon will be keeping itself safe as Fake Out comes out from Iron Hand on Eric Rios' side. Uh, will -Wisp does attempt to go into that Roaring Moon because why on earth not? And uh, we obviously have a flinch from the Garganacle as well, so uh, predictably. <laughs> and here we go, the little damage that was dealt. And it's gone. Yep. And we're no back up to full health. So going into turn two, we have four full green bars on this field. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of damage that was dealt there, trainers, because it might be the only one for a little while. <laughs> Quite possibly. Uh, you need to be going for the Dragon Dances to do actual damage here. But if you switched out, your booster energy was wasted. You at least get the, the double power on the acrobatics, but then you don't have the attack boost anymore. But here Kush comes a regular old throw chop. Again, we've seen it do good damage. That was just over half, but here is the burn once again. The Roaring Moon is not going to be able to do the damage it needs to now that it's been burned once again. No, it won't. It's attacks that will be halved. At least it was some good damage there onto the Arcanine. Drain Punch coming out from Iron Hand into Garganacle. It's a super effective hit. We are having some more health chipped away at this stage uh, of the game. And uh, Salt Cure, super effective hit. is really nice damage onto the Arcanine. Wow, damage. Remember yeah, that's, that. That's the yellow. Turn two, we see the yellow. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. We do see some health coming back for the Garganacle, but Arcanine will take some uh, salt damage after Roaring Moon takes its Will-O-Wisp chip. And uh, the salt will be eating away at the Arcanine. Will it go down to the red? Yeah, no, no, not quite. It's still in the orange just. No, and let's of course, for the berry, of course. Activates the berry. At least that's got broken through now. So Arcanine is on about half of its health going into the next turn. Oh, the green once again. Yeah. Such a shame. But yeah, <laughs> really, really nice choice of item there. Because the, the choice is, do you go for the, those pinch berries that re re recover a little bit more, but need you to be lower health to activate? And the mm. Agrawal berry has activated all three games here. So absolutely the right choice for the Arcanine in regards to this set as well. We've seen the Citrus Berry be very useful on the Amoongus. So very good item choices coming out for this Arcanine because every bit of HP absolutely matters in this game as we've seen across the course of the game so far. But yeah, allowing that Roaring Moon to be burnt. You've got some good damage onto the Arcanine, 
but was it good enough to, to, to allow yourself to get burnt? Because you needed the Roaring Moon as your main way of breaking through the Golden Go. And now it re can't really do that anymore. It can't do that anymore as uh, it is the Roaring Moon that switches out for Marco and it's RK9 that switches out for Eric ready to provide a lovely uh, second Intimidate drop when it comes back in. Amoongus rejoining the field for Eric and it's Volt Switch into Marco's Iron Hand Deja Vu as it goes back to Eric Rios and he'll be able to bring in a Pokemon from the back assessing this current board state uh, as to what will be the best bring for him here. He's thinking about it and it's going to be that Golden Go coming back in. Would it be able to set up a uh, nasty plot in this position. It's Salt Cure though going into that slot which is not a very effective hit right now but of course the Salt Damage will rack up very nicely onto the Golden Go in particular as uh, Leftovers might for the time being bring it back up to full health but here comes that Salt. Yeah you definitely need to catch the Golden Go with the Salt Cure on the switch in because mm. if the Golden Go was in this position without being Salt Cured it's a Rage Powder nasty plot there comes the damage once again mm. but now you've got to choose do you go for the nasty plot to enable yourself to get the KOs but then you sacrifice so much of your HP in order to do it because the Salt Cure really, really racks up on the Golden Go. You need to get that damage onto it somehow. It can't really be the Roaring Moon too well anymore. So the Salt Cure adding up really needs to be the way to do that. And the fact that you caught the Golden Go on the switch in, very, very nicely done because this would have been a very killer position if it didn't have the Salt Cure on the Golden Go. Now do you just switch out once again, dare I say it, <laughs> so that you can get rid of the Salt Cure so that you can come back in at some point to be able to get the Nasty Plot. Because Golden Go, it won't be threatened too much across this game. It doesn't need to go for Nasty Plot this turn. Therefore, once again, here comes the Arcanine. A wise man said to me yesterday, Jamie Boyd, have you heard of Caster's Curse? And there we go. He <laughs> called the Golden Go switching out as Arcanine, Arcanine comes back in and drops the attack of the Iron Hands and the Garganacle. It is a terror coming out for Marco into that Garganacle once again. It's been his Terra Pokemon of choice in all three games. It becomes the Ghost type, so changing its matchup uh, somewhat uh, as Marco has committed his Terra. It's Wild Charge coming out from my hands onto the Arcanine. It's decent damage down to about a quarter of a fifth of its health. Takes a little bit of recall chip. Pollen Puff though, no. going up from the <laughs> Amoongus. It's the Arcanine. If it's not an Aqua Berry, it's an Amoongus. Ugh. And Salt Cure coming out into the Amoongus, which, uh, yeah, that was on full health. And now it's taken a little bit of chip. It will take some salt damage as well as uh, Garganacle <laughs> gets a little bit of leftovers recovery. Oh, I'm getting sick of the color green. <laughs> oh, there's this goes some extra, extra damage into the Amoongus though, but that's why Amoongus has been brought to this match, right? For bo yep. both of these players, you're going to be able to get those pollen puffs, get the recovery going, because the percentage HP absolutely matters here. Whether mm. that is going into the end game of the your time, or the, the, the game timer, I should say, or it's going to be the fact that you've done enough to get any KOs to put yourself as a Pokemon advantage, because that, once again, it seems how uh, it seems to be how this match is going. But See, here comes the Golden Go, though. So is it going to get in for free without a Salt Cure? Here comes the Golden Go, and uh, Jamie Boyd saying that he's sick of the color green is really quite something, given his favorite Pokemon is Superior. <laughs> as uh, the Roaring Moon comes back in, joining the field in place of the Iron Hands. Rage Powder coming out from Amoongus on Eric's side, redirecting attacks towards it. Uh, Salt Cure is going into the Amoongus instead, so another little bit of chip, and of course this Amoongus can switch out at any time to recover some of that health. Golden Go is recovering that HP uh, little by little. Same with the Garganacle for Marco. Yeah, very nice switch in for the Roaring Moon though, because that does somewhat threaten the uh, Amoongus and the Golden Go, because now you've got the Golden Go in without the Salt Cure. This is the position that Eric needs in order to do the damage. It's going to chip away once again on the Amoongus, almost below half HP, almost that fabled yellow, but going to be able to get that Rage Powder and Nasty Plot this turn if you choose. You can go for an Nasty Plot without the Rage Powder if you want to, but that would be incredibly risky in the face of a potential Throat Chop, which would do okay damage and the Salt Cure that would start to chip away. So you may want to go for that Rage Powder, sacrifice the HP on your Amoongus. You may be KO'd this turn because of the Acrobatics, but no, not caring about that at all. Going to open the Golden Go up to the Throat Chop and the, throat and the Salt Cure by switching in the Iron Hands. Here comes the Iron Hands. Golden Go going for a Protector. It will take yet more leftovers. Recovery uh, It keeps itself safe as the Acrobatics comes out from Roaring Moon into the Amoonga slot, which is now, of course, that Iron Hands and Salt Cure was going into the Protected Golden Go. And uh, surprise, surprise, it was a repositioning turn for Eric. Wow. I mean, it's, it's a very reasonable reposition for mm. sure. Now you get fake out pressure into the Roaring Moon. Yeah. And then you'd only take a Salt Cure. I say only a Salt Cure. It's still very effective on the Golden Go to be mm. able to start chipping away. But that's not a Throat Chop. 
That means that you can go for the fake out into the Royal Moon. Therefore, there's definitely no Dragon Dance putting it faster than the Golden Go. Mm -hmm. That means that you'll take some chip damage, significant chip damage, in regards to the Salt Cure, but that's a nasty bot. And that's actually a sneak peek of the Mimikyu in the back. I hadn't spotted oh, that. Oh, oh. That could do damage. Oh, I'm waiting for that to join the field. That would be able to turn on the offense for sure with the Life Orb and maybe even the Curse as well. Curse would be able to start chipping away even more at the opponent. That would be very good to see. Here is the Mimikyu. We've got the switch up. Yes, Mimikyu joins the field. The po a Pokemon switch up. That is incredibly exciting as a Make It Rain comes out. And of course, Garganacle is kept safer from that than it wa once was because it's now the ghost type. Mimikyu's disguise is, of course, immediately busted. But uh, will this Mimikyu be able to clinch out the game for Marco? We'll have to see. Is it oh! a critical hit? Wild charge onto the Garganacle. But Garganacle is able to survive on just 2 HP. It does manage to get the Salt Cure off into the Golden Go, and it will have that Salt Damage racking up, but uh, a crit! Yeah, so close. So close <laughs> with the critical hit, but Garganak will survive. And even 2 HP is a full Pokémon still mm. on the field. That still could come into play if we do end up going to the timer. If the Garganak will survive through the rest of the game, that will be a plus one to Marco in regards to the Pokémon that they have available. But at least you got the Salt Cure on the Golden Go. Now, who is faster between Mimikyu and Golden Go? Mimikyu, if it's trained as fast as possible, definitely outspeeds. But if you want the most amount of damage possible, you slightly underspeed what Golden Go could be at its max. And given the fact that Golden Go outsped the Roaring Moon, I wouldn't be surprised if Golden Go is trained as fast as it could be. So, did you tr go for the offense with the Mimikyu? Did you go for the insurance of outspeeding things like Great Tusk, things like Golden Go? Because Mimikyu could go for Shadow Claw with the Life Orb. That might kill the Golden Go. Be careful of the Intimidate that's obviously going to be coming in with the Arcline. Do you go for Play Rough into the Iron Hands? That would do massive damage into the Iron Hands as well. But of course, be careful of that Arcanine switching in. That would resist the, the Play Rough that could come out. So, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see some kind of Arcanine joining the field. And it seems like it's going to be for that Golden Go. And here it is. In place of the Golden Go, it is that Arcanine. So it will be dropping the attack stat of both the Mimikyu and the Garganacle. Both these Pokemon are physical attackers. Uh, and indeed, all of the Pokemon that uh, Marco has brought are physical attackers. Eric going for the Terra onto his Iron Hand. This is one that we haven't seen Terraing before. It is into that Grass type. So uh, it uh, it will be changing up its defenses. It's also immune to spores, but of course, this particular game, Marco has left his Immungus on the bench. It's Shadow Claw coming out from oh. the Mimikyu with a crit onto the Arcanine. So uh, and that Life Orb uh, damage there as well. Wild Charge oh. coming out oh, into oh, the Mimikyu. Go. It's a knockout onto Marco's Mimikyu. Oh my goodness, it goes down. Was it the Pokemon to bring in this game three? It, we can't be sure because it went out so uh, well fairly quickly, all things considered. And Garganacle is able to get a recover off. There goes the red through the orange into the green. A little bit more thanks to the leftovers. But uh, yeah, Mimikyu maybe wasn't the play after all. Oh, it definitely could have been though. Because mm. it had the offense available. It had the life orb. That's the item of choice to increase the damage output. If that Shadow Claw would have been able to hit into that Golden Go, especially with the fact that it went for a, a god critical hit, if the Arcanine had switched in for the Iron Hand slot instead, that critical hit would have surely KO'd the Golden Go, and that would have changed the match completely. But instead, it is going to be a KO from the Wild Charge into the Mimikyu. Because it's not got the greatest of uh, defenses, and you've surely just trained in offenses and speed, on the Mimikyu, because of the fact that you've got the Life Orb, means that it's got no bulk available. And the Iron Hands is strong enough to be able to pick up that KO. KO, once again, we're at 4-3. So we're starting to actually get a KO on the opposing side. That's put you at the advantage, because now you have a plus one Pokemon. You have a plus one Pokemon, and you have an Amoongus joining the field. Roaring Moon is going to keep itself safe this turn with a Protect. Uh, and next up, it's the Iron Hands attempting a Drain Punch into that slot. But of course, Roaring Moon isn't going to take any damage, and Iron Hands isn't going to be recovering any health in return. Salt Cure coming out into uh, Iron Hands, which of course is going to deal <laughs> more damage now that the Iron Hands was a Grass type, but uh, that was still absolutely pitiful. But of course, it is the Salt Racking Up that we uh, care about onto the Iron Hands as uh, Garganacle continues to recover HP with its left over and Mori Moon takes some burn chip. Garganak was at 2 HP. It mm. was so close. Yeah. And now it's just incredibly healthy once again. <laughs> and there, there we go. There's the yellow. There's the yellow yeah, on the Iron yeah. Hands once again. So, yeah, really, really nicely done there to start chipping away. You need the KO, though. That's the important thing. Marco has yet to KO a Pokemon on Eric's side of the field across these three games. And now you absolutely must because you are at the Pokemon disadvantage. There's still been a very, very significant amount of time used up in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if we're starting to see the three minutes left somewhat soon. Yeah. So you need to start turning on the offense. Do you have that still available? Because you've got the Drain Punch just hitting into the uh, Iron Hands. You've got the Spore 
now hitting the Iron Hands as well. That could have been some damage into the opposing Iron Hands with yours, but now that's not going to be an option in the future. Not going to be an option, and Salt Cure comes out from Marco's Garganackle with <laughs> a critical hit, rubbing Salt in the wound quite literally, as uh, Amoongus will be taking some Salt residual damage, and uh, Garganackle recovers a little bit of health. And yes, it would be such a shame for Marco to uh, go out the same way he did in Game 2, having lost a Pokémon versus Eric having all four of his uh, intact. So really looking to get that knockout. But of course, uh, conversely, Eric will be looking to just conserve at this point. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The fact that you've got the Iron Hands asleep means that that's not going to be able to do the damage. Now you've got to rely on your just Salt Curing Garganackle and your Burned Roaring Moon. So there's really not much damage coming out from Marco's side of the field. You're forced to switch out the Iron Hands here. You could have burned some turns of sleep and start to wake up so that you can actually do some damage with Iron Hands. Iron Hands is probably the Pokemon that can do the most amount of damage, but now there's oh. just the Drain Punch. That's two KOs. Oh, it's two knockouts, and that is surely going to tie up this game for Eric. And it catches the Roaring Moon. It's a super effective hit into that Dark type. And uh, Roaring Moon goes back to its Pokeball. It's just the Garganackle and the Iron Hands for Marco, and uh, it's Pollen Puff coming out for Eric, healing up that uh, Iron Hands. They didn't really need a Pollen Puff, but of course, uh, all health counts at this stage. And uh, another Salt Cure coming out for Marco into uh, Iron Hands for Eric, and uh, a little bit of leftover recovery. So, wow, two knockouts. Could we get the standard way of winning a match by knocking out all four of your opponent's Pokemon here? Who knows, because it's still been in plenty of time at this point, but uh, Marco has really, really lost any kind of offense that they have available to them. The Iron Hands coming back in, Guaranteed to sleep. It did not take its mandatory turn off sleep at this point. You can definitely get some good damage into that with your Drain Punch. You can somewhat ignore this Garganackle. It doesn't really matter that it's going to start spreading the Salt Cures. That's not quick enough. Mm. Garganackle wins incredibly slowly, but you do not have that time available anymore. You've got two KOs on your side. You need to match with at least two KOs to be able to at least get yourself back to two for two so that maybe when it gets to the timer, which it is still likely to get to, mm. you could have the advantage there. But four to two is a massive, massive advantage for Eric. A huge advantage as uh, Iron Hands does take a turn of sleep and uh, Intimidate coming in to reduce the attack on uh, his side of the field. Goodbye, as, Yellow. Uh, <laughs> and Puff comes back in for Arcanine, bringing it back up to the green indeed. And Assault Cure coming out. It's not much health at all. We will see the Assault Residual Damage starting to rack up. But as long as this Amoongus is on the field, it can not only keep healing up its allies, but also heal up itself thanks to the Regenerator. Yeah, and I think the Assault Cure is going to put it back in the Yellow. Eh? There it is. It, oh, no, yeah. it's not. Oh, so close. <laughs> oh, I was so excited then, but no, not quite. Oh, but oh, oh, uh, the there is the yellow. There, That's all we're yellow. looking for. Yeah, there's the chip damage we need. Uh, but at least the Iron Hands are taking the turn of sleep now. It could wake up. Oh, yep. Sorry, forgot about <laughs> Citrus Berry. Up we go back to the green. So uh, not much, not much damage there. Actually, less that. Less, like it was, it was effectively healing the Amoongus there at that point. But yeah, now you've got the Arcline intimidated the Iron Hands. The damage is gone. You need critical hits at this point to be able to start to get some KOs. And even then, you can't deal with the Amoongus. Like, Iron Hands can't break through the Amoongus with just the attacks that it has available. You're going to need to break through with the Salt Cures. You can't really do that quickly enough at all. Arcanine, why does it need to stay on the field? You could have got off a bit off, but why not cycle the Intimidator once again? Here's the Golden Go. Here's Golden Go coming back in Rage Powder, so Amoongus will be redirecting the attacks towards it. And uh, next up is the Iron Hands, which does take another turn of sleep, unfortunately, for Marco. Salt Cure is able to come out into Amoongus. It brings it down uh, just a tiny, tiny bit. A uh, little leftovers recovery there on the Golden Go on Eric's side. And uh, both Amoongus and Golden Go are in Jamie's new least favorite <laughs> color of health. Uh, I'm waiting for the reds. Where's the reds gone? We saw yeah. that so like on the Garganackle, but now it's uh, safety back in the green. But yeah, it's just a very, very slow end to this game. The Golden Go is pretty well positioned now. You can get an Arsenal Plot, and then you'll be able to Shadow Ball into the Iron Hands pretty nicely. Uh, you can switch out your Amoongus if you do want to. Of course you want to, because why wouldn't you uh, be able to yep. get the Intimidate? Yeah, Regenerate is also a good ability, as we've seen across the course of this set, for sure. Well, that's not the Arcanine. That's the Iron Hands instead, so you get the Fake Out Pressure. Way, it's Iron Hands instead of the Arcanine, as Golden Go goes for a Protect keeping itself safe, and uh, Iron Hands does wake up this turn, and it's going for a close combat into Eric's Iron Hands, which it takes very well indeed. And of course, uh, Marco's Iron Hands now eats up a defense and special defense drop. Salt Cure was trying to go into the Golden Go, but of course, it keeps itself safe on this particular turn as uh, Golden Go gets a little bit of leftovers recovery oh, there. Three minutes the left. Three minutes timer. Will it be a full uh, round of three 20-minute games? 
games. Go on, Golden, go. Two nasty pots, nice and quick, and then one make it rain. Let's finish this game. <laughs> go and you can get the KOs on the opposing Pokemon. Like, if, if we had enough time, if we had a few more minutes, I'm sure the Golden Go in this position, you go for Fake Out into the Iron Hands, you go for a nasty plot, sure, you take the Salt Cure, but then you're at plus two and you can actually do some pretty reasonable damage. And surely a plus two Shadow Ball and a Drain Punch would be enough to pick up the knockout on this now close combated Iron Hands. Mm. So, yeah, it's inc it's very, very comfortably Eric's at this point. There's not enough damage to be able to take two KOs. And even if there was, there's damage down onto Marco's side of the field that surely puts the percentage in Eric's favor regardless at this point. Uh, it's just a formality in these last few minutes. Does Eric decide to just turn the offense with the nasty pots? Does he just take the absolute guaranteed win condition of I will switch out once again because I don't want any KOs? But you no, know, you've got the fake out pressure. Might as well take it. Fake out pressure. And uh, in fact, there's a shadow ball coming out from the goal to go. It's fishing for another knockout and it doesn't get it as we see the two minute timer. I mean, I personally am buckled up. I'm ready for it to go all the way to 20 minutes as the salt cure comes out into the golden go. And uh, the salt will be chipping away at the golden go there. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like there might be three knockouts here because that Iron Hand is in range of a Shadow Ball once again. Probably in range of a, a Drain Punch as well. It's a bit of a shame that Purifying Salt does half the damage from Ghost Type Attacks because that could have been a super effective hit into the opposing Garganacle. It's not quite going to be. It's going to be neutral if you do tend to go for that instead. But yeah, just last couple of minutes just to confirm that Eric is going to be joining Aurelian in that final, of course, because there really is not too much to be done on Marco's side of the field. Even if you get a critical hit with your close combat to KO the opposing Iron Hands, that's still only a, a three, to, 3 to 2 at this point, or 2 to 3, I would say, if we were talking about Marco's side. Uh, so you're not going to be able to pick up enough KOs and be able to take this game at this point. We're just going through this last little formality to confirm that Eric will be going into the final. Yeah, and I, I take my hat off to Marco. You may as well play it through to the end, uh, because why You've not? You've come this far. You've come this far, and there we go. We see the minute mark uh, ticking away. Oh, almost the last turn of the game. <laughs> We're so close. <laughs> Here we go, and uh, the trainers have now locked in their moves. It's Shadow Ball coming out from Golden Go into the three Iron Three KOs! Hand. It's three KOs, so it's just this Garganacle against the world now for Marco. And uh, next up, it's Wild Charge from Iron Hands going into the Garganacle. That Garganacle is back at full health, so it uh, takes it down to about two thirds of its health. Salt Cure coming out into the Iron Hands and uh, a tiny little bit of chip damage. I mean, this is tied up for Eric as we see this game play out. And yeah, we've uh, we've done it. We've gone um, all the way to uh, we're three not gonna have time. 20 minute games oh. as uh, Golden Go gets a little bit of leftovers. Garganaku gets a little bit of leftovers. And there's still Salt Cure as well. So this yeah. is going to be the final turn of the game. It was so close to being able to get four KOs. Surely a Shadow Ball, well, maybe. It would be very close if Shadow Ball and a Wild Charge based on that damage would have been able to pick up the knockout on that Garganacle. But there we go. We went the entire distance with three 20-minute games, trying to lock in the forfeit there right at the end, of course. <laughs> uh, we've gone the distance. That is it. Time has run out for the third time. Eric Rios is joining Aurelian Sula in the final of the Pokemon Utrecht Special Events 2023. Absolutely incredible. And you can see the joy on Eric's face there as he's done it. He's clinched out the longest possible game he could have had. <laughs> And he advances to the final to join Aurelian. Aurelian would have had time for a little nap in that uh, break before the <laughs> final. Could well be going into it better rested than Eric. But, uh, oh my goodness, what a feat. I mean, the phrase, it's a marathon, not a sprint, could not be more appropriate. Absolutely. There were four KOs across the entirety of that set. That's... that's got to be the smallest amount of KOs I've ever seen across a match. Like, the <laughs> fact that we got a 4-4 win... That's something in itself. That's all, that's incredibly rare. Yeah. But you can get a 4-3 one. Like, like when you're playing a positional game, there's bound to be a knockout somewhere. You, it's incredible. Like you don't go to 20 minutes mm. very often at all by not picking up a KO at all. But there was just so many switches. Like especially in the game one, there yeah. was, there's plenty of switches across the entirety of that set yeah. for sure. But game one, I do want to count. I do want to know. Did switches win over? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Not just the game one. Ac across that set, did switches beat attacks? Yeah, I'm very absolutely. curious to know that. I'm hoping someone kept track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, and if not, we will be going back over that match and counting those switches. Um, yeah, and it was interesting how it was uh, zero knockouts in game one, uh, a solitary knockout in game two, and then it looked like it was going to be the two knockouts in game three. But there was able to be a third one just at the uh, end there for Eric. So again, Eric proving himself to be the master of these long game plans.
Yeah, we like if we had like maybe two more minutes, we'd have been able to get the classic win of knockout for Pokemon. Because you'd have just been able to go for Shadow Ball, Wild Charge. If that's not KO, the next turn, whatever attack would be. So mm. yeah, very, very slow and drawn out game. Mimikyu could have been the solution mm. for Marco. Yeah. It had the potential to be. Yeah. Because it got the critical hit as well on the Arcanine. If that would have been a Shadow Claw critical hit on Golden Go, that's gone. Yeah. That's easily a KO. So if you're able to land that, that would have been very good for Marco. If you can land an unintimidated play rough into the Iron Hands, that would also do significant damage. Mm. But Eric just never gave the opportunity for the word unintimidated to be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> because Arcanine was always joining the field and then pretending to be an Incineroar and switching back out. Doesn't yeah. have access to the passing shot at all, so it just has to do man manually. But in it comes once again for the Intimidate. I'm pretty sure we got a total of something like minus 50 across the entirety of those yeah. Intimidates, <laughs> yeah, across yeah, yeah. all of the attack drops that could have happened. Yeah, and even though Arcanine doesn't have access to the parting shot, of course, Iron Hands does have access to the Volt Switch, so you can still get Arcanine back in on the same turn to provide another Intimidate. Yeah, remember, drop. Volt Switch counts as net neutral. It's an attack that's yeah. also a switch, so it doesn't count for either when yeah. it comes to does switches win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something we will have to uh, take into consideration. And we've had confirmation that we're getting the interview set up with Eric, so we'll be able to hear from him again before going into the final between him and Aurelian Sula. What are your thoughts going ahead into that match, Jamie? Well, we had... I would, I'd like the first, the top eight and the first top four were very intense. Intense is absolutely mm. the word to describe that. Yeah. That was such a positional game that I don't think intense is the right word. No. So I'm, I'm trying to find what would be the perfect word for that because it's so rare that you see, like you can go to timer for sure. Sometimes yeah, you yeah. go for timer. All three games, mm. that's not something that's, that's common in the slightest. So yeah. yeah, yeah, very, 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 like rare to see. Like, I, I want I want to feel privileged, <laughs> but that, that took a while. <laughs> I still feel slightly privileged to uh, to have uh, been casting that particular game with uh, that uh, it couldn't have gone on any longer. Um, will Eric be trying to draw out the uh, next game as well against Aurelian? That's clearly the uh, environment in which surely he that can't happen. Thrives no. well, uh, perhaps not. And Aurelian not. might not be adapted to that playstyle. Yeah, we'll uh, have to see how they match up into each other. And now we are able to hear from Eric Rios, your winner of that second semi-final. Welcome back trainers, we're here of course with the winner interview. What an amazing game to see that. There was a lot of mental fortitude that had to go in that. Uh, so what are your thoughts, your first initial thoughts about the game? This is not the first time I'm playing Garganak teams and when I face that teams, I have to, okay, keep calm and play along the, the battle, you know, and let's keep damage yeah. and I'm winning by time. And we got a timer three times, so... Yeah, there yeah, were yes. only four knockouts, only four Pokemon yeah. fainted, <laughs> and three of them were in the last game. <laughs> that was is, super intense. It was very intense. It is the positioning that was really well done. Uh, the Golden Go, I feel, was very valuable there, uh, threatening with the nasty, uh, possible nasty plots and just the offense that it could provide possibly as well. Um, but looking at your team itself, is there something that you want to remark that you really like about your team? I really like Oldengo. I have been using Oldengo since Series 1 at yeah. Liverpool. I played Among Us Oldengo the same, uh, not with the, the water Terra type. Yeah. I was using a steel Terra type in Series 1. I think it was better. Yeah. But now with a lot of Arcanines, with um, uh, a lot of rain teams yeah. after Gavin winning Oceania. So I think um, Water Terra type Golden was pretty good. Yeah. Also for Paris Trap teams that yeah. Wolf have been using at, and in the United States, the regional. So yeah. it was super good against that. Exactly. Just good as gold, ignoring yeah. Paris song as well. Uh, Would have <laughs> in that game. It was amazing to see just how you danced around, really uh, doing, getting that much damage, and how do you keep yourself calm like that? How do you keep, how do you keep thinking to your game plan? Um, after winning game two, yeah, um, I thought, okay, now I need to read some turns yeah. to win this because if I don't read anything, if I ball switch uh, every time. I can do damage, and he always has Rarimun with a lot of damage, uh, uh, Salkur. Yeah. So I needed to do some damage. So that's why I drain pants or wild shirts, uh, some months to keep damage. And yeah, as we and saw, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was nice. And 
it was some turn that I when I KO uh, Mimikyu, yeah, he um, he put Brahma uh, Rory Moon, yeah, Rory Moon in, yep. And okay, I was thinking he can protect now and Salkur um, hands, yeah. But after that, he don't have switch. If yeah. I drain punch and spore Rory Moon, I always win. Yeah, exactly. It was a very tough position for him. So you position your board very well there. Yeah. And um, well. Let's not cut to the chase because you have another game to play after this. Is there anyone you would like to shout out? Uh, all my friends and my family that have been watching home and supporting me all the weekend. Also my Twitch community that has been supporting me every tournament I play. So thanks to all of them. That is a good thing to see. Uh, thank you very much trainers. We'll be back shortly with the finals of course. And uh, we'll see you there.